uh, the book I've gotten is 1984. Uh, honestly, I was very excited when I got this book because I've already read the book. Before starting going into the details of the book, I uh, want to uh, go a little bit more deeper into the author's life and which they've already done. It's the same author, George Orwell. They've already given a little brief insight into his life. And why I want to go a little bit deeper is because uh, I strongly believe the art and the artist cannot be separated. So for us to understand the book deeper, it's also important for us to understand where the author was coming from. Two things. One, uh, he was born in India. He uh, grew up in a very colonialist, imperialist sort of a setting in England. But he was posted to Burma where he served as a watchman for almost five years. So here, this is, this is one incident. And the second incident is he served, he volunteered in the Spanish Civil War because he wanted to be with the uh, Spanish population and fight with them against the rising fascism which was happening in their country. So uh, until then, what's important to note is he's always written written things. He was an introvert for most of his life, but he decided uh, he'd always written short stories, poems, uh, a lot of other things. Uh, and he, since he was a journalist, he kept publishing it every now and then as well. But these two incidents, which was his Bur uh, Burma days and uh, his Spanish Civil War, made him realize he wanted to write more politically because those incidents shaped him that you can't uh, not talk about politics in this environment because it's also very, uh, it's during the time of the Second World War, First World War and Second World War. So these are very important periods. So this changed the way he was looking at the world and politics. So I just wanted to set that context. It's a very important book because, uh, and, and also in pop culture also, a lot of people say, oh, we are going to an Orwellian world. So it's become very, uh, synonymous when we say that certain things are going very very wrong in our world he's entirely associated Orwell is associated with this sort of a connotation few things you'll notice with both animal farm and this there are a lot of recurring themes of power of totalitarianism which means there's total control of power within certain groups of people and a uh, loss of hope these are certain many other themes but this are these are certain recurring themes that you'll find between both of these books um, so I'll just set the plot my intention is to just give a broad idea of what the book is, important characters, certain important events and then I want to leave it as a cliffhanger. I don't want to let you all know what happens in the end so that all of you can go and read and form your own uh, sort of opinions on this. This is set in a fictional world. Fictional world, This the name of this country is called Oceania. So Oceania has its own citizens of course and it has one political party which is called Ingso and they have one leader who is called the Big Brother and this is a very famous quote all of you must have heard the Big Brother is watching you which means his eyes are on all of you that's what it means so that is one thing that Big Brother is there one political party one power is there which is ruling over everyone that's one important thing and the second thing you must have guessed of course there is no opposition here but on the underground there is an opposition they think there is an opposition which is called the Brotherhood. The Brotherhood has, uh, has a leader called Emmanuel. So here what I want to say is this is what the people believe. They believe that there is a big brother, they believe that there is a Brotherhood, but nobody knows what is the truth. This is what the government makes them to believe. And the reason I say this is because there is so much control of the government, uh, of the party on everything, on all aspects of everyone's life, social, political, personal, romantic, all aspects of your life are being controlled. I want to give one or two examples of what that looks like. On an everyday life, you have thousand cameras around you. There are screens all over you. All parts of your life is being monitored and is being checked. You go to sleep, there is a monitor looking at you. You are eating, they tell you what you should eat, how much you should eat. They tell you how much you should exercise. They tell you you're overweight, you need to lose so much weight. And uh, you, cannot, you cannot have relationships. Pleasure is not in their dictionary or vocabulary at all. The children are encouraged if, the, if their parents talk ill about the party or ill about the brother, the big brother, they are encouraged to go and uh, complain about their parents to the government. And it is really upon the government to decide what they want to do with their parents. They could be killed, they could be rehabilitated, whatever it is. So a sense of this is it looks very dark because there is so much control in one person in one hand. There are certain th terms which are being used in the book. Newspeak. Newspeak is a language which the government created. There is no English, there is no French, there is no German. There is nothing. The government creates its own vocabulary. So uh, you can of course imagine words like democracy will not be there. So there is no word. 
a way of expressing these emotions at all with the people and there is another thing called thought thought crime which essentially takes away the ability for you to even think for yourself when something is going wrong you can't have a conflicting thought whatever the big brother says that is going to be the final truth if you're going to have a contradictory opinion to that it is a thought crime and there is a thought police to come and make amendments for that so this level of surveillance is basically there in this society that we're talking about and the third one is i want to introduce you to certain characters who are important one is the male protagonist his name is winston and then you have a female protagonist whose name is julia so these are two important people you need to know that all forms of production consumption everything is controlled by the government so they're all working for the big brother uh, in their very regular day there are certain acts of rebellion that they do for example you have winston who maintains a diary so what do you do in a diary you write your own thoughts you write your own actions you write your own feelings now this is a thought crime if he's got caught for that he could be killed so this is one small act of rebellion that he does and next we come to julia Julia also has her own sort of rebellion but her way of rebellion is she'll do everything that is necessary uh, by the by the big brother which means you abide all the rules but she does rebellion in her own way she has sex with a lot of people like which is not accepted by the government um, and in some way or the other there is another person here called Emmanuel who is a very important character sorry not Emmanuel O'Brien he is a very very important character because he plays on the weakness of both of them he realizes that okay there is some sense of rebellion here let me appeal to them let me see if they respond to this let's see if they want to be a part of the brotherhood mind you brotherhood is the opposition here let's see if we can recruit them here so he sort of misguides them into you know believing into him and all of that he plays on the weakness of them and what happens after that is the entire book which i would want all of you to read uh, just one more event which happens here is uh, there is a love that brooms between both uh, both winston and uh, winston and julia which is very important to the book because in a in a place where there is so much surveillance and so much control they go the extra mile they express their love and what happens after that which means basically they have sex once and uh, in this society in this society that we're speaking about that is a very big crime because your your sex can only be used as a means for producing babies it can't be used for pleasure it can't be used for love that is the entire setting so uh, this is the entire book now uh, what i would love for all of you to read is what happens after this when they are in a relationship when they are both in love and what happens after that that is the entire uh, book in its whole and a certain sort of uh, takeaways for me has been two i mean two very important things is love and hate these two emotions have been very strong for me throughout the book first i'll start with hate uh, there is one habit which is there in the book every day or every week uh, there is a 3 minutes of hate that the entire country follows everyone comes to a common ground everyone screams and expresses their hatred towards their common enemy so what does this do for me it expresses that a lot of people when they come together when there is a cause which is as powerful as hatred and hatred towards something it sorts of breeds a lot of uh, it's a very intoxicating feeling which can make you do things that you're not aware of it is very easy for you to be misled when you're in a group of people when there is a wrong leader when there is a wrong purpose it is very easy for people to follow the crowd and not think or or not have an opinion for yourself that is a very harmful thing to do and the second one is love one more thing here is to remember even despite all of the surveillance control everything that's happening there the a very human emotion love has been there for both of them and showing that act of love is a rebellion because of that whether they get caught not get caught is a different thing for you guys to figure out but um, they felt that you know coming together they had the power to change the world they thought like you know maybe if we come together maybe there is a hope for a different world so for me that was a big takeaway that love is such a strong emotion that can make you want to hope for a better world and take action towards that a few things which i found uh, very interesting was there's a lot of parallels that you can draw from the book to the current world which is very you know important i just wanted to do a small exercise with all of you Uh, I wanted to read out two three incidents from the book and if you all have felt these things in your life uh beat personally or you've read about this please raise your hand that's all I want to do 
Yeah, so before I go on to that, I wanted to read one very, very powerful quote from the book, which shows the level of, you know, the darkness and the dystopia that was there in the book. I keep telling dystopia, but dystopia is just like a place where there is no hope, there is so much darkness where you just feel what is the point of living, right? There's so much, so much lack of any purpose in living in that world. So uh, one of the important, like one of the very nice lines from this book is, Every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street building has been renamed. Every date has been altered. And the process is continuing day by day and minute by minute. History has stopped. Nothing exists except an endless present in which the party is always right. So this is the amount of uh, sort of the surveillance and the control that is there in this society. So with that, I want to ask a few sort of scenarios and see if do you all relate to it in your life or in the society that we live in, right? Um, have you ever seen, uh, you know, certain parts of history being selectively selected by your government? Uh, the names of certain, uh, you know, things being changed for their own convenience. If you feel sometimes like all parts of your life is being constantly watched by something or someone. And um, the other thing is there's a uh, control of how one should think. Do you feel that your uh, thought process, there is no... Uh, there's no independent uh, way of thinking. Everything is always already out there and you're just copying. There is no uh, individuality in your thought. You're just being fed with whatever is there and you don't feel the ability to think and just going to consume whatever is there and not form my own opinion. Has that ever happened? So all of these things are uh, reflections of how uh, the narrative is being changed by certain powerful force and uh, the impact that it could have. So uh, having said all of this, a uh, few things which the entire, uh, the world generally says, they, they uh, trivialize it by saying when certain events happen, oh, we are going to an Orwellian world, oh, we are going to a very dystopian future. This is a very common sort of a uh, uh, comment that's being made. But it is not all that bad. I know we are heading, we might not head in that direction, but there are definitely certain events that are happening right now. Uh, standalone events which may or may not lead there. So uh, the only thing that can be done is when we see these signs, for example, the ones that I read out and all of you agreed that these signs are there. Um, the only thing that we can do is rise up and rise your voice against it when these things happen. When you're seeing signs of these things where there is total control, that there is total uh, control of power in certain hands, it is necessary for us to raise our voice. That is the only way we can stop this from going to a world where nothing can be done, where there is no hope, there is total dystopia. This is the only thing that can be done. And uh, the other one more comment is people say that, you know, uh, only communism is going to, uh, if only total communist governments can have, you know, this sort of a dystopian future, but that's not really the case. Power with any sort of a government, capitalist, socialist, left, right, they all have their forms of control. It only takes different f uh, shapes and forms. So it's for us to decide when we see these signs, how do we raise our voice against it? And that is the that is our form of rebellion and our form of showing up. And uh, I am mostly done with it, but I want to leave with another thought. Uh, there's a very famous line which goes, no two people ever read the same book. So these are my perspective and everyone will have your own way of looking at it and I think that's the beauty in it. 